sign they are son of boogaloo welcome back my friends to the kung fu electric boogaloo oh yeah this one is season six this is son of boogaloo and i am your host eight dan standadu happy to be ta- here talking about crank to high voltage and as usual i'm joined by my good friend jimmy carter jimmy carter Honestly, I'd rather stick my dick in a blender. <laughs> <laughs> totally understand. Totally understand. And as you can hear from there, you can hear Jack Hall. Oh, degenerate. Degenerate. Degenerated. Yes. And finally, Nick Boxer is here. Greetings and salutations. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you've you've approached the opening as if it was a monster truck rally. Well, that's <laughs> Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. You know, it's Nick, high voltage. <laughs> when you're talking about crank, crank two, I feel like I need to say it like crank two high voltage just automatically. Like I, that. I, I think it was a con- contractually uh, enforced that you <laughs> must say crank two high voltage in some sort of monster track voice. <laughs> well, considering that <laughs> considering I from what this movie is. It was it was only crank high voltage until it got to the DVD and and then it was crank two high voltage. So <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, yes. That's a nice trivia right off the top of the hop there. I was about to yeah. correct them but uh Yeah. Thanks thanks for schooling us. Yeah. Crank high voltage. Right. Sorry. I'll just call, I'll just call it crank. <laughs> All right. Well, Nick, why don't you? you know, could, please, please. You've watched this more than more than any of us. Please. You know, you may ask me what happens in this film, <laughs> and I will, I, I will tell you what doesn't happen in this film. Everything happens in this film. Well, do your best to explain the Give story to our Give listeners. Oh, oh, you want a story? <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I, I that maybe it's Achilles' heel. Craig, yes. Craig to high voltage may have forgotten that bit of movie making. Well, the story, story actually is really simple. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, crank two, thankfully, takes off exactly the way Crank one left off. With uh, our, our yeah. hero, <laughs> Jeff Kellyus, falling from a helicopter, hitting and hitting the ground, bouncing and dying. Immediately, some sort of triad members come in with shovels and pick him up off, off the asphalt and transfer, uh, transfer him to some sort of safe location so they can... Uh, tra- take all his organ- organs and transplant in them into something or other. Uh, Chef Jelly seems to be awake during most of this for some reason. I don't quite understand now, but whatever. Um, the only reason he really wakes up, though, is the doctors uh, start talking about transplant plant- planting his deck, which, <laughs> w- which causes him to immediately wake up and kill everybody in the room. Um, at, then he realizes that, oh, wait, somebody stole my heart. Without really knowing how this works or anything, uh, he decides to go find the guy who stole his heart. Um, 
and he has an electric heart. By the way, science is really important in this movie. If you don't have some sort of PhD, you're not going to understand all this. Um, <laughs> Luckily, Dwight Yoakam does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So he calls his buddy Dwight Yoakam that tells him to stay electrically charged somehow. It's not really that important. It, just, just know it's funny. And uh, Jeff Chelio spends the rest of the movie running through interesting obstacles, chasing the wrong guy, which I found a nice little thing. I just love this movie because it never stops. It just never stops with the ridiculous. He has to, Jeff Chelio has to run through guys with face tattoos and Taiwan, uh, Taiwan hooker emporiums. And he meets up with his old girlfriend who is all sweet and pure in the first one. And now she's a stripper dating uh, Corey Haim in uh, one of the best uh, white trash disguises you've ever seen. <laughs> um, he, he teams up with his buddy who died in this, or the twin brother of his buddy from the first one who died in the first one, who not only is his tw- the twin brother of that guy, but has full body Tourette's. <laughs> By the way, I looked it up. Not a real disease. <laughs> thing, I, I love the fact that you looked it up. <laughs> Thank, God bless you for looking it up, yeah. though. I, I, I so appreciate that. Um, there is nothing in this movie that isn't goddamn awesome. <laughs> <laughs> How many times have you seen this film and the original Crank? Um, after Crank 2 came out, I have not gone back to watch the original Crank. Crank 2 is superior in all ways. I disagree, <laughs> but go ahead. I, I, I'm going to jump in and say I have never seen the original Crank. Neither have I. You've nice. not seen Crank 2. You don't have to see Crank 2. <laughs> <laughs> was I anyone confused by the plot? I was, I was for like, I think I had seen like 15 minutes of crank. I did not, I know I didn't finish it. Uh, I know that I, I watched part of crank and then went, Oh, I'm over Jason Statham. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so how many times have you seen it? You answer the question. I don't know. 40. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> oh, and yet you can't do a better job explaining the story. <laughs> I'm surprised. I'm surprised you don't have it fucking memorized. <laughs> so, so the idea is that he's got this artificial heart. It's got a battery pack that runs down really quickly. Uh, when he loses the battery pack several times during the film, he has to just shock himself in any way possible um, to get his heart going. Once he takes that shock, his heart pumps really fast, and. Uh, uh, so I'm I'm now furious at my doctor who's been giving me medication to lower my bre- blood pressure because apparently higher blood pressure gives you superpowers. <laughs> yeah, I know that's right. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I've been robbed for a while. Maybe maybe, <laughs> maybe you just need a heart transplant to give you uh, to give you a, a fake heart, and that's it's what will do it. Inconvenient to constantly be giving yourself electric shocks, but um... <laughs> especially the way he's constantly <laughs> having to do it. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's a, I mean, there's, there's give and take in everything in life and <laughs> might actually be worth that. Yeah, that that's true. That's true. I mean, I love it when the, when friction is decided is the way of, uh, oh my God. of giving you <laughs> yes, the, 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 everyone knows about the static electricity that is caused yeah. by having things that is like your hair stands up on end. That's uh, and your heart uh, starts beating shows. really fast. Yeah, exactly. That's it's because. <laughs> Because, yeah, de- definitely uh, skin on skin causes the most static electricity one can imagine. Because, because, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, or 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 more to the point, um, rubbing up against an old lady without you <laughs> like touching your well, like she was wearing like a wool sweater. Like I yeah. mean, that one actually made sense. I mean, in the context of crank, that one made sense. <laughs> and, and the person he rubs up to before that, uh, the lead singer of uh, Lincoln Park. That's right, Chester <laughs> Bennington. Yep. Yep. <laughs> That's awesome. So the, there is a point where he's he's he does not fa- he's at a horse racing track and does not have access to electricity to uh, to get his heart running again, and uh, he gets a he gets a hot tip that friction from Dwight Yoakam that uh, friction might be a solution to this. Uh, so he starts rubbing up on stuff, and then he starts having sex with Amy Smart on the horse racing track, uh, you know. 
And and I don't know where security is at this point oh, because they're man. there for a while. <laughs> oh man, they are, and and like they're getting thrown a cowboy hat, and and like they're the moments of that are are amazing. Well, for it's so many call, I mean, they could have just left it there, but no, they have to have a horse with a boner jump over them. <laughs> Yeah. I love what she what she what, she gets really really turned on by seeing that horse boner go oh, uh, yeah. jump across them. Yeah. Well, so this is a throwback to the original to the original uh, movie where there's a scene where they get off a bus or something like that, and, and in the middle of like a a, uh, a market downtown Chinatown, they have a, they have sex in public <laughs> to keep his heart going. Because in that one, it's just that he has to keep the adrenaline going, whereas this one, it's all about the actual electricity. So yeah, I mean, so this was this was this was literally, literally the sequel sex scene. <laughs> well, and they keep mentioning it. They mention it a lot. Like you know, this guy's left you, uh, you know, after this kind of thing twice now, and it's just like, mm, must be from the original. <laughs> every that that was that was how I explained every. Maybe it was better that I hadn't seen the first one because then. Any little issue, I was like, mm, "Yeah, must have been in the original." <laughs> I, I truly enjoyed how the news captor they, they summarized some stuff with the the news uh, guy who gave up any pretense of like being in a news report because oh, he's just swearing John, away. John Delancey, yeah, John that, Delancey, yeah. yeah. <laughs> man, oh man, the the amount uh, it was shocking. The amount of. Uh, of people that wanted to be in this movie for whatever reason. I love it. Yeah. Oh yeah. I want to be in this movie. What are you talking about? <laughs> there is, there's, there's, there's uh, MMA guys, there's move for musicians, there's porn stars, you know, by I, the way, I have, uh, the I have never seen a list of, of uncredited as long as this film. Yeah. Uh, would you look at oh, it? Yeah. There's more, there's more uncredited people in this movie than there are credited people. <laughs> there is a, a and porn the way, store she gets locked in the back of the car car with. Is uh, that, that somebody? A, I think that was just a hooker. I don't think that's oh. the porn stars are. That was just a hooker. They're, yeah, yeah the porn fellow, stars are on strike. Fellow stripper. That was a fellow stripper. Yes. The porn stars are on strike, and then and they have a bunch of real life porn stars and and them saying what would be their most famous clips that were played on the Howard Stern show, except for, except for uh, Ron Jeremy, who apparently wasn't invited, but heard about it and figured they just forgot to invite him. So he just showed up and they figured they'd shoot him. So he improvised. Good trivia right there. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. This, uh, this movie makes, makes the no sense. <laughs> like, just, just from going but it's still on purpose for it oh oh yeah of course of course i mean that's it oh. right everything about this movie is is ridiculously planned out uh to give you to give you this like it, it this is like a video game brought to life which actually then was reduced back to a video game and shot that's almost well, what that, it feels like and to there's me. a Billion references to to the Grand Theft Auto series throughout it. So, so the first <laughs> three of three sure. Grand Theft Auto series games, including the outfit that Jason Statham is wearing, which is per- practically one of the one of the characters. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, we haven't talked about Bay Ling yet. Oh my uh, god! Oh, oh man, she is my favorite character in this movie. With lines like, <laughs> "You, you go get revenge." I hug all the pussy for you. Um, <laughs> um, ta- talking in broken English, dirty language for the entirety of the movie. Running after Chef Chelios for no apparent reason. It's so broken it has to be subtitled all the time. <laughs> and the subtitles make no less, I think they make less sense than what she's saying. Oh, man, yeah. <laughs> I mean, but, and that's one of my favorite uh, favorite. Um, you know, elements in movies is when they when they have people speak in another language and it comes out to be something ridiculously silly. Th- there's room for great humor in there, and this one did not disappoint in that regard, not at all. <laughs> oh, and I mean, cho- chocolate was great too. Dwight Yoakam's girlfriend there. <laughs> well, Dwight Yoakam, I think he's a pimp, isn't he? At this point, and that's one of his. It's not so much his girlfriend as his girlfriend slash one of his. I, I don't think it. I don't think it's explained, and I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> there is so much going on in this movie fake. that that that. That's, well, I mean, I mean, I'm glad they got her uh, up off the couch to go get uh, to to go trap uh, 
oh, uh, John Carradine for ne- like Boom <laughs> Dong, yes, yes, John Carradine's last film role, Dave, wow. Dave, oh, Dave, sorry, Dave Carradine's last Dave, film Dave role, Car- yeah, um, and and it's this. Oh my god, I I stood up and applauded when I saw Dave. I I I, I reckon not like the voice, but like before you even see him, the voice, yes, and of course. And he's and of course he's he's in he's in you know freaking yellow face yellow yeah, face. yeah like his yeah. last film and it's yellow face it's it's somehow appropriately incredibly <laughs> awesome like it's 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 just it's just amazing. Now, was there a third one ever made of this? No, no, no. this one was not successful enough. Tragic. I always kind of hope they'll have a direct to DVD sequel because the where they ended it with him Bert, but beyond recognition, you don't have to get Jason Statham. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, you true. can get anybody to be, <laughs> be in this thing. And and well, really, and... go ahead. Well, it, it you know it, if it was somebody else, it wouldn't hurt the franchise ultimately because it's already fucking batshit crazy. No, no, and and the other thing is though that this is. Like these guys went on to make the two Ghost Rider films, and and so when I saw that oh. immediately, I, oh yeah, no way. oh yeah, yeah, exactly. So awesome. one <laughs> Ghost Rider film, both of them. Did they make both? Yeah. I th- no, they made Jonah Hex and the second Ghost. Uh, no. no. Looking that up, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> either way, that's not selling me. <laughs> oh, but as soon as you, you hear that then you know that that you know it totally makes sense that that they they're they're doing that right like you can see the you can see the the correlation well according to according to nick um he nick is or according to wiki nick is right jonah hex and spirit of vengeance uh-huh uh-huh are you sure they didn't have something to do with it it, um, it, it they apparently screenwriters of jonah hex directors and camera operators of spirit of vengeance uh, uh and then nothing at all to do with the other one nothing <laughs> not on wiki not they, on, they not did do gamer which is also awful and bug nuts <laughs> um, i'm gonna i'm i'm looking this up our, because I our, list, our, our, our listeners have have now watched ghost rider and are shouting yeah. the answer yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> they were able to fit in all of ghost rider I'm while we're having this discussion. and and if they have i'm sorry <laughs> Well, it's better than watching Spirit of Vengeance. Well, uh, it's, oh, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> no, either of those might end up in a comic book season for sure. Oh, I'll yeah. tell you what, both of those I'll take over Jonah Hex. <laughs> yeah. Jonah, Jonah Hex is, oh man, we don't want to get into it because yeah, we're talking uh, about another movie, but maybe some memorable someday. moments for that one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, I've yeah. seen it. I've seen it. And I yeah. 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 All right, where where are we at with this thing? I have no idea. <laughs> does, does anybody? <laughs> God, you know, Dwight Yoakam is probably my, it's, is my second favorite character in this movie because I love Bailing. Bailing's amazing, uh, but Dwight Yoakam, who's who only does all all of his scenes in one room on the phone. Yeah. Uh, it, it is basically the info dump of the movie. Every time Chef Chavales calls him, he's like, "Let me give a long speech explaining the the quote unquote science." Of the movie, <laughs> which like, is exactly what he does in the other one. And uh, so, so the first time Chef calls him up, he's like, "Hey, uh, something's happened with my heart. There's some weird box attached to me." And Dwight Yoakam's like, "Oh, that's the that's the Fliberty Gym at heart replacement. Here's <laughs> here's core. everything you yeah. need to know about that because I just know off the top of my head all of these things. <laughs> By the way, I'm I could replace that if you get him me with your original heart again because I used to be a heart doctor before you know." <laughs> <laughs> the vaginal, re- my my wife's unsuccessful vaginal, vaginal re- <laughs> yeah, yes. oh Seriously, is there a line in this movie that does not contain awesome? <laughs> <laughs> you know, one of the interesting things as I was watching this. Now, this movie reminds me a lot of the Japanese um, action films, you know, it like, like say a Tokyo Gore police, Robo Geisha, stuff like that, where they don't care. And they just throw everything that's absolutely gory, perverse, crazy, bizarre, all that stuff into the script and, and, uh, and put it on screen for you. And, and by the way, I just got to have quickly, I just got to say, uh, Nick, you're wrong. 
uh, this film has not, they, they have nothing to do with the first uh, Ghost Rider. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think, I think you need to, you owe him an apology, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Nick, where is my apology? Anyways, what were you saying there? Sorry, Stan, go ahead. I just have to get that in there. I have anything that's wrong, I'd love to uh, bring it up. <laughs> there you go. But yeah, I, and this reminded me so much of of one of those Japanese movies that I actually thought that the director was going to be Japanese, and then it was just like he's just kind of transposed that storyline. So when it when it wasn't, I was I was kind of surprised. But it, but it has that real feeling to me of just batshit crazy all the time. Mm-hmm. Right down to the kaiju monsters. For oh no yeah. Reason. Oh for sure. Oh, that, God, I that, love that. That was the best scene in the movie. Without any question, that is the the best scene in the movie. So tell him about the scene. Set the, um, set the scene. Chef Chelios but... finally catches the guy who doesn't have his art, and they start <laughs> fighting in electrical plant. And then for some reason, they grow into giant monsters and fight. And then when the fight is over, they revert to some sort of human form again. But but those monsters are um like the. Jason Statham's face, an exaggerated <laughs> monster form, is some kind of amazing. Like, some kind of... <laughs> wow. Yeah. Oh, the it's, chin? The chin. The chin. Yeah. yeah. It, it's just... It, this is so great. It's seriously so And great. I love how they never <laughs> tell us what's in the box. No, yeah. no, no. <laughs> it's, what, it's the same thing that was in the Pulp Fiction box. Right. Yes. <laughs> I, I, I just... I was kind of hoping it was a ferret. <laughs> and honestly it is the same thing because that's the thing about this movie is it's it's really just a, a pop culture uh, blender of other things you know of, of a billion other things like I say the porn star actors they're they're dropping lines that, that are famous from clips that played from pornos on the Howard Stern show because that's pop culture There's right. the GTA the, the like all of it like it's just that's all it is. It's just, it's just pop culture from what was it, 2009? Just in one crazy, make no sense film, you know, blender. <laughs> it's like put together, like say, literally put together in a blender. I love those, Good. like the the weird left turns where it's like it's it's going it's crazy enough, and then like there's there's the Toho tastic uh, giant monster piece. There's the weird news breaks. Um, there's a flashback to his childhood that is played out like a talk show, like a Maury style talk show with Jerry Hallowell, no less. <laughs> with his Ginger mother. Spice yeah. as his mom, yeah. <laughs> Which I, I honestly I didn't catch at first time. Um, you know, who he's like five years older than in real life, but hey, I guess that doesn't matter. It was him as a kid. It's him as a kid, but it's him on a and, talk and, show and, as a kid. And, and, that, like it's, it's, and it, but it's not just him on a talk show. That's some actual talk show that he is. Like, I mean, we don't, I don't know what it is, but it's a real life talk show that they're parodying. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, there's, there's a spot where like when they're having the sex scene on the, on the horse racing track, uh, the, their genitals are, are pixelated out. Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Which, <laughs> it's so That's like just stuff. drawing attention to, to like <laughs> the, the weirdness of what you're watching. <laughs> there's a spot where they, they do this cut um, you know, like where normally you would go, like you know, four hours later, and it's nine seconds later. <laughs> like they, they show you th- a three-second uh, black screen that says nine seconds later. <laughs> I love like, just... that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it's it's totally. I mean, it's 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 a it's a crazy. Like it's going to be really interesting to score it because, like, it's WTF that is so on purpose that it's not WTF. Like it's, I don't know where to go with this. Like, I really am curious as to how, how this will turn out and how you guys will see it. Cause it's it certainly, it's, uh, it, there, it's an experience of nothing else. It, it absolutely is. We should, we should go to scoring. Well, let's go to scoring. I've got some stuff circled for WTF. That's for sure. Uh, <laughs> all right. In our search for the ultimate B movie, we rate each film in five categories, none of which are objective quality. The first category we category 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 we call schlock appeal, and we start with Stan. Well, I I, I feel like this one was pretty schlocky. Uh, you know that that it had that it had some moments that some people would consider schlock. Um, it was it was very over the top. 
and it was you know it's it's funny because because as we go through some of the movies from this season especially you know we had son of kong and then we had like this really high flesh gordon and then we go american psycho it's down a little bit and then we've got crank 2 high voltage and and so it feels like we're we're really bouncing but um <laughs> I'm going to give this one. I'm going to give this one an eight. Yeah, I I know it. You have trouble putting a number on it because was it schlocky? They they, they were they definitely have everything in it, um, but it wasn't really marketed well. It was marketed terribly. That's the box office was so incredibly low. Well, it's such um, a niche that product. It really is. Yeah, it's the problem. Um, but oh, you know what? I'm just going to give it a seven because I mean it has. Has a whole lot of schlock, but I don't know if it all comes across. And again, this is where this is one of the things. Like sometimes, like nobody's gonna watch certain movies and not say it's schlocky. Like nobody watches Frankenstein Island and and not and says, oh, that's not schlocky. Like it is. And you guys are saying you think there's a fair amount of schlock, and I think there's very little schlock. I think I think there's a ton of sleaze, mm, and that's not necessarily. That. And that's not necessarily the same thing, sleaze and and schlock. And 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 that said, there's so much please in it, and I feel it deserves a little credit for that. So I, I wish I could score it higher. I can't because it's not schlocky. But I mean, because the actual schlock, I'd probably give like a three. But because the sleaze level, I'd give a fifteen because <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's just so sleazy. I'm, I'm going to give it a six because I feel like it deserves some credit for what it is, even if it's not what we normally count. <laughs> Uh, I th- I think I'm probably coming in in that ballpark, and then they put David Carradine in uh, yellow face. <laughs> so eight is what I'm going back to. Uh, it's, that it's, was just... it's all the people that are in it that that really that really give you the number in my mind. <laughs> yeah, there's there's just like it's it's the there's a lot of subtle stuff. I mean, yeah, a lot of it's over the top. A lot of but if it's it's like you said, it's just so much stuff in a blender. Uh, all right, the next category we call more heart than budget. Well, you know everybody was everybody seemed really into it, especially as they were as they were going through the uh, some of the, some of the outtakes. There was certainly you know an amount of fun and amount like I'll bet you this movie would have been an absolute blast to be on set for it. Just just the sheer craziness and stuff like that. But in my mind, like there's there's no like everything is so planned out that. I can't say that there's a lot of real heart that's going into this. I'm just going to go down the middle with a five on this, just because I'm, uh, you know, it's a sequel, so uh, you know, I'm not quite sure that it that it hit any one mark. Uh, to quote the movie, "Suck my dick, suck my motherfucking dick." <laughs> Ten. <laughs> there. <laughs> oh Nick, you're gonna you could quote this movie uh left and right and center. Not just a great quote, it's a great quote in that moment in that way. Can actually yeah. <laughs> is, is is Nick allowed to give this a memorable moment for having seen it forty plus times? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> um, I there there are interviews that exist with the two directors that they realized that their career was up the paddle during the film of this movie, filming of this movie. So they just decided to let it all hang the motherfucking out. <laughs> they wanted to do everything they could possibly do in the movie because they might not ever get another chance. <laughs> and they were successful. Yes, they were. If you look at it that way, they were successful. Wow. 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 <laughs> awesome. I, I am, I am, I am, uh, I'm all. Uh, anyways, <laughs> I guess I could give this a uh, an eight because, like, honestly, twenty million dollar budget and it, it, sure there is a bunch of like amateur filmmaking mistakes. 
like things like, you know, director in the shot or, <laughs> you know, or, or yeah, like stunt men in the, in the oh. shot or, or, or special effects into the shot before they happen, like, like marking so that they can put in the special effects after all that type of stuff. Like there's a ton of that stuff. In How about stuff. the director's cameo, man? Well, and, <laughs> yeah. and I'm not even talking about the cameo. I'm talking about the time that, uh, that, uh, that, that they're in the corner of the shot and you see them running away and pulling out their ear pierced. Um, so there's <laughs> lots of that stuff. Like it's just like it's totally amateur made. On the other hand, $29 million budget. And it really looks like a far more expensive film. Like it looks good. It looks slick. It looks like a big budget film and 20 million for it. Like that means that uh, I think it had less budget than, than what flesh flash Gordon in 1980 or whatever. So that's pretty damn impressive. I, I got to give it a, uh, an eight. All right. Well, I'm. Uh, I I thought there was a lot of heart to this, but uh, twenty million is still, you know, like ten different grindhouse movies. That is so, true. <laughs> uh, so I I came in at a six on this one. Yeah, I could see that. Uh, our next category, and uh, I get permission from your wife to run uh, for uh, you know to take to uh, take uh, today off from taking care of the kids. WTF moments? What the fuck moments? Well, now here's the interesting thing. I. Um, I'm I'm not gonna like spout off a whole bunch because I mean the, the entirety of the movie was crazy, but you know this is this is one of those cases for me where and I know Nick has talked about it before where where like the established universe has has put in the rules, and also you know as as Jack talked about the fact that everything is so you know planned out to be what the fuck and crazy. So therefore, to me, it's actually, I, as I'm watching this, I just got to a point where everything was so crazy, my expectations were completely dropped, and I just watched it with kind of a like, wow, oh, so that's what they're doing now. I mean, make no <laughs> doubt, the kaiju thing is awesome and amazing and crazy, but uh but a lot of the other stuff is just is just batshit crazy within the context of the movie i'm going with the 6 um yeah i i know what you're saying i'm not going to insult you on this one <laughs> um i disagree <laughs> with, with a lot a lot of um I, I disagree with it but um yeah i'm only going to go as high as an 8 um don't get me wrong the the wtfs that are there are awesome um, the flashbacks. I mean, when they when when the kid with the full body Tourette's is introduced as a twin brother, and we get flashbacks to the club, and the fact there's no real reason that the gay, the sadomasochistic gay bar biker gang is in this movie, but they are. <laughs> um, and the shootout at the end where you have hookers and porn stars and Chinese triad members and some sort of Mexican cartel gang all shooting it out over a pool. And then they introduce the villain from the first film as a head in a tank. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Hell no. I'm going with a nine. I wanted an eight. But yeah, nine. <laughs> I forgot about the tank until the, the, the head in the tank until I said it. There was no reason to put that in there, but it was awesome. But the, but that's the problem with this film is there's every reason to put everything in there because it is on purpose going saying let's make a film that's crazy, let's make a film that's WTF, and so it's so it's, I don't think I make all films like this. <laughs> All films like this all the time. It's it's a like don't get me wrong. Like the first movie was far. This one's far more over the top. In the the first movie, which I, I like, I said I prefer, and I did watch before watching this one as a as a like you know as, as a thing to to kind of get into this. Um, it's it's everything on that one is over the top, but it's it's there's a sense of reality to it. Whereas in this one, they just throw that out the be out right at the beginning, and that's probably where the WTF for me comes from. Is like, it's that it's the continuity, but it's not. It's like it's just bigger in every way. I mean, literally, the movie starts with where the last one ends is he lands, bounces off a car after falling out of out of an airplane, and bounces on the ground, and there's a close up on his face, and his eye blinks, so you know he's not dead. 
So this one, it follows. And then they say like three months later, you know, he's in the hospital and, and they're pulling out his heart because his heart's amazing. And it's going to go into the, into the yellow face, David Carradine. And, and number one, they, they, they look, they also, the next thing they're going to pull off is his penis. And, and that's where he's like, well, you take my heart, but my penis, fuck that. I'm getting up and out of the bed. <laughs> and, and, and that's because they, they look, they lift up his, his, the bed sheet and see his penis and then stick an, uh, uh, which apparently is amazing, uh, from everybody's reaction, uh, almost at the level of that horse on the track. They, they stick up a thermometer up his ass. Then he jumps out of bed and is wearing underwear. And, and that's where I'm sitting immediately going, what? Like, it doesn't make any sense. But to me, it's more that the idea that not that they're taking his heart out or the fact that he lived through the fall. It's that a fact that apparently there's no other injuries, no broken back, no broken ribs, no broken anything else to his body and falling and bouncing off a car from, um, from, from 20,000 feet. Like that to me is a remarkable WTF. See, you're forgetting a couple of things there. He's oh, Jason oh. Statham. Oh, okay. <laughs> and he can turn into a kaiju monster. <laughs> and he had three months. There's, I mean, three, there's very three little Jason. Right, your back will totally heal if you fall twenty thousand feet. After. It wouldn't be broken. Or you wouldn't be paralyzed for life. He's Jason Statham. I'm sorry, I forgot. Like, <laughs> well, he, he took that. He took that martial arts training where you break fall. You, know, you <laughs> oh, yeah. the, He probably smacked his arm, his hand on the floor on the ground right as he hit. Just transfers yeah, yeah. the energy. Yeah, right, yeah, right, that's right. You're fine. And you, yeah. you, you know that car he bounced off of. That was that was probably like a foreign made jobby. So that can't yeah. hurt him. Yeah, that's well, true. You, it's got it's got it had new shocks. Yeah, yeah. So there's the- no, and <laughs> maybe airbags. Tons yeah. Of yeah. Uh, Not to mention, I mean, he had to stick the, the gun up that guy's ass in the next scene. How so. did we not mention that? <laughs> how did we make it all the way to here without mentioning that a guy gets oh. a shotgun shoved up his ass? Oh, yeah, because how did we forget I love the something that happened in this? You know, like... <laughs> Who says I wasn't going to mention it? I'm, I'm in the middle of my WTF, guys. <laughs> There's the one where, uh, there's the one where, of course, where, uh, you know, the, the fact that, like I say, of, of all the continuity errors or whatever, the one I love the most is the, is the bartender who gets shot, who, uh, in the next scene is a, or in, the, in the next shot is in the background with the blood already on her face to get ready for the fact that she's about to be killed and in, in what's clearly going to be shot next. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, it's it just, so there is enough, like, Things like that where I'm like, wow, that's just not competently made to give me a, a good WTF score, despite how, how on purpose all this is. So I'm going to give it an eight. Eight, you say. All right. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to say some words here. Uh, shotgun up the ass. Uh, <laughs> everything Bay Ling. Uh, Highlander. Uh, Yellowface Carradine. And... Uh, and and my my favorite incredibly subtle thing. So he's he's get he's getting the heart transplant, and he is in the like he's got the worst HMO in the history of uh, medicine. Uh, he's in this back oh, room of, of a massage parlor. That's, that is great stuff. Where they've parked him uh, t- for months apparently. While he's and then he's he gets this heart transplant done. Um, on the wall is the is the X ray of his chest that his name is printed on. So that and it says department photos. So this isn't just a back room. This is actually this is the real medical department of this massage parlor because they have they have an x-ray machine and and identifiers on their on their stuff. And then well, if you been to one that doesn't then you've not been to a good massage parlor. <laughs> 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 there's there's the rub and tug and then there's the one where you can get a heart transplant done. Yeah, so, duh. I've been going to the other one. You've been, um, going, to the one. <laughs> You've been going, going to the rub and tug one? And my, <laughs> well, there's two, and I'm not saying which one I went to, but I have my heart. <laughs> I have my original heart. Um, so, <laughs> but, and then there's the bit in the, so with the big shootout at the strip joint, that one of the strippers gets a bullet through her fake boobs and the, <laughs> the saline spurts out. <laughs> Perfect. Of that. Both both dents get right through. <laughs> it just it's, catches her just just so, and she's horrified to see. People wonder scene. why I love this movie. <laughs> oh no, uh, we understand why you love the movie. We're not saying uh, that. So I'm I'm going with a ten on this one. 
All right. Memorable moments. This is Damn. this is one of those cases where I, I feel like I'm going to at random remember things from this. Perhaps perhaps it'll be like a flashback moment, you know, kind of a <laughs> PTSD kind of kind of thing. Where it'll be, be like, oh my god, Bay Ling. <laughs> you know, but like, like You know what Bay Ling was awesome. Because yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, list this and nothing else. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's so wow, true. She was awesome in the crow. Okay. <laughs> Wasn't that like the crow too? Or <laughs> no, no, she was in the original crow. Oh, okay. Oh, sure. well, yeah, but I don't think she was awesome in it. <laughs> I think she was in it. I agree she was in it. Yeah. She, she was hot. She was in it. Oh. Uh, She's an attractive young lady, that's for sure. Uh, well, I guess I uh, yeah, attractive age appropriate lady. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like. <laughs> Like there is, and, and see, like there is no question. Like when when I when I think of, like the giant kaiju monsters will never leave my brain. I can I can guarantee that Jason Statham's chin, you know, that's that's glued in there now. Um, there's there's other moments that that much like the the video game L aspect of it. It's just gonna it's just little fraction moments here and there. Um. The story itself, I'll, I'll undoubtedly forget uh, in no time after this. But the 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 memory of the batshit crazy will remain. Again, I'm going with a five. Uh, do I need to quote this movie once again? Ben. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, please quote this movie again. Well, I mean, you've undoubtedly had it memorized, given everything, every amount of time you've watched it. Ah, <laughs> uh, you hurt my strawberry tart. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> failing alone is a 10 in this movie <laughs> all right jack, jack well you know what i gotta say uh all due respect there um i i i remembered this movie to a degree like i remembered one thing about this movie when i watched it before i remembered uh, uh saying to myself oh wow jenna hayes and that's it <laughs> was one of the porn stars but i remember totally her scene she looks so hot um i can't say i remembered anything else about this movie from when i saw it last time which is what i'm judging it on this time uh and i think the problem with remembering <laughs> things specific things is too much is thrown at you so i i got a five yeah always a challenge when there's there's so much and it and when i now that i will go back and watch crank uh it's going to be hard to pick out like which movie was that in? Uh, but uh, Bay Ling, Bay Ling was awesome. Uh, my my favorite line was, uh, "I'm in no mood today, Randy." <laughs> <laughs> like that. <laughs> All right, five for me. Did as you well. did you guys think uh, Corey Haim looked like Car- Car- Gary Haim in this movie? I did not. No. I, I didn't. I did not recognize him. Didn't didn't recognize oh, okay. him at all. Yeah, no. I, it, obviously, it, it, it's probably his last film too. Uh, no, he made seven films between this and his death a year later. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I think it was seven that I saw on, the, on his IMDb. Because he did uh, not look good in these films. <laughs> he, he looked a little he looked a little rough there. Uh, what, what was his cause of death, by the way? What was the uh, – I don't remember. Uh, it was drug-related, wasn't it? Was it? I believe it was. Yeah. S- six, six credits after uh or five credits after after this movie and he died like about a year after it came out but definitely his last theatrical film uh i don't know was uh was was shark city theatrically released <laughs> or or the hostage game i'm uh, saying no <laughs> by the way i i, I you theater. know what yeah. I can't. I got to say this now. I, I mentioned that I didn't remember anything except for the, the scene with the porn stars. Um, how did I forget the, the when we introduced in the first probably fifteen minutes of the movie? Um, it, it's just uh, uh, Amy Smart in a pair of tight shorts and and topless, except for uh, you know electrical tape over her nipples. Like, <laughs> Why did they do forget? that? I love it. I how love are it. we not talking what about kind of, what the hell kind of strip joint is that? <laughs> like, like what state are they in that they can have stripping but not nipples um <laughs> i freaking love it i, I, I love I, it i just thought she had a little 
I, I just thought that was a personal choice for her. I, re- I remember seeing the film Four Rooms. And uh, and there's the same thing where like I think it's Alicia Witt takes off her top and she's got uh, uh, electrical tape on her nipples and I was I was told at one time that it was some kind of fetish and then I found out later it was just a ratings thing like yeah just, an age thing. Yeah. Yeah. Or, oh my yeah she was too young or something yeah. like that was it was there wasn't any kind of like hidden meaning to it or anything <laughs> it was just like they didn't want to mess with ratings or she was under eight, nineteen or something like that when she did the movie. <laughs> Crazy concept, crazy concept, Stan. Um, I mean, I mean, this one to me, it, it it's it goes all the way because they put everything into it. I, there is no way that I could try to explain this movie to anybody else in the universe without without like my own mind melting down because it's just like okay so so Jason Statham's a guy and and so his heart gets transplanted because. Uh, okay, so because Poon, Poon Dong needed his heart, and and so it, now he has to hook himself up to, like, a car battery, and he has to jolt himself, uh, yeah, fuck it, never mind, it's ten. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I can't argue with that, ten, um... <laughs> <laughs> You've made a compelling argument. <laughs> <laughs> like I was trying to explain it to Shanna, and and I just real and and then there was kaiju monsters, and oh my fucking god, what am I doing here? <laughs> like, you know, I also uh, tried with Lacey. I tried to explain it to Lacey and and uh, my wife, and and I'll be honest, I talk. I only mentioned things that we have not talked about in the entire episode. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> The ironic thing is, you probably didn't sell her, and she'd probably like this movie. <laughs> I think she might, yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, okay, so it's not a crazy concept. I'm sorry. It's, crazy, <laughs> it's not a crazy... Like, the first one's probably crazier than this one, in concept. This one's just... It's a sequel. It's not crazy at all. It just took what it did, and it's a crazy execution. There's a difference between crazy concept and crazy execution. But it does the fact that he spends the entire movie chasing the wrong guy. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> just that's just crazy. That's just crazy script writing. Uh, it's crazy execution. Um, but that doesn't mean it doesn't deserve some credit for being crazy. So I, I, I got a I got a six. Six, you say. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm, I'm coming in in the midst. I think I think uh, it is a sequel, so I'm not going to go all the way to a 10. Uh, however, the amount of stuff that they threw at the, the at the audience in this film and the and the times that it just takes a total left turn like the talk show. Uh, uh, I'm going with an eight on this. And every season we have six secret modifiers. Uh, this film has two of them. Uh, it does have a continuing vision. It is the same uh, creators of the original film. Uh, and we do see quite a lot of the supporting cast, even supporting cast who died in the first one, <laughs> come back. <laughs> so that's you know definitely worth it right there. Now, normally I'm pretty I'm a stickler on the uh, the modifier for this movie running over uh, ninety five minutes. but I, I I took a look and because of the amount of weird, uh, uh, bloopers and there's a there's a mid credit scene to finish the film and then there's like strange bloopers. The credits of the the end credits of this film start twelve and a half minutes oh before God. the end of the movie, <laughs> which is an insane like the that's like the amount of credits on Infinity War like that's for a ninety six minute movie. So I'm I'm gonna only gonna call this a ninety five minute movie because uh, I'm being charitable there. So. That brings us to a grand total of 77 out of 100, which uh, puts it in the top 10 just out of the top uh, five or six there. Wow. Uh, so very well performing. Comes in just right between Hots and Frankenstein Conquers the World. Strangely appropriate. Sorry, what was the <laughs> score? One more time? 77. 77. 77. Okay. That's Seven. actually pretty close to what I predicted it would score to, uh, to Stan a few days ago. Yeah, yeah, it's it's very true. Um, you know, the one thing I didn't mention um, was the Mike Patton soundtrack, which was yeah. a, a largely what the fuck moment as well. Because well, it's great. Yeah, I had Mike no Patton. idea. Yeah. You, you know, no idea what was going to happen with the with the with the soundtrack at any That's given true. time. 
Mike Patton, <laughs> the the lead singer and and uh, and a leader of Faith No More. Um, in yes. case people aren't familiar with them, so. Well, I'm going to watch it again just for that now. <laughs> yeah, 41. Wow. You're going to watch it again? No way. <laughs> oh, crap. <laughs> All right. Uh, why don't you tell the folks where to find us on the inter- interwebs before we get into uh, choosing next season? Oh, yeah. All right, we are on Instagram at Kung Fu Electric Boogaloo, and uh, you we keep track of our ongoing search for the Ultimate B movie on our podcast sponsor, We Talk Podcasts. Go on there, take a look for the Octagon, and uh, you will see all of the films we've done so far. It's about sixty films, Stan. Uh, about sixty films <laughs> yeah. <done> so far. <laughs> sure, or forty-five. <laughs> oh, somewhere in that range, uh, and uh, uh, mileage may vary. Uh, also, uh, We Talk Podcasts has a Facebook and a Twitter. Uh, like them and follow them, and you can find out what we're up to from them. All right. Well, what does everybody say? Uh, do, do you want to win a, or tell the folks what we're doing next, or do you want to choose next season? Uh, tell them the next film first, and then we'll go from there, I think. All right. Well, the next film helped give us our name. It is Break Into Electric Boogaloo. So... You know, this this will be the first time for me seeing that, and and I'm actually really excited. I don't know what to expect at all, especially after watching Crank Two. <laughs> you know, I, I feel also the I, first also the first time for me. I, I feel yeah, my like, first time as well. That's this is going to be interesting. Yeah. Nick, have you seen this one? I've seen this one. <laughs> well, I mean, hello. I mean, I almost could have been. Hi, his name is Nick. Have yeah. you met him? Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Is there That's a right. Boogaloo movie that he hasn't seen? You know? <laughs> I love a couple a couple of days ago, Jack sent us an insane trailer for a J horror movie. And he's like, this thing looks insane. And and Nick said, Yeah, these are the other ones by the same director. <laughs> <laughs> this is what makes Nick Nick. This is what we sure, yeah, this is what we why, why we love you, Nick. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's choose season seven. What the hell? Season seven. This one might put us actually over 50. <laughs> I don't know what you know about math, but yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, I don't know what you know about math. <laughs> I can't remember what season number. That's the problem. Yes. I, can, I, know my seven, I know my seven times tables, but not what season we're in. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Do you, don't you need to know your eight times tables better than no, no, I know it's 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 uh, it's. Uh... <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, <laughs> All right. Let's let's do this thing. Uh, do you want me to go first again? Sure, Stan. Why don't you start? All right. Well, you know what? I gotta say. Normally, I would. I know we go in that order, but the thing is that last time Nick won, he won this season. Because he he accused us. He said it's going to be easy to win again if you guys bring the weak sauce that you brought last <laughs> time. And, and for that reason, uh, uh, you know, Jim, you promised that this week you would bring some formidable sauce. Oh, uh, I was oh, I was supposed well, to bring the hot sauce. May, maybe <laughs> maybe we should get Nick to go first since his one last yeah, time. Yeah, that's what I'm. Thinking. Yeah. That's what I'm. Okay, thinking. so let's. I think, let's, uh, I, let's I think Jim this, should go uh, last. Because yeah. he has formidable hot sauce this time, okay. and, and and Nick though gets to go first because he talks shit about us. Fair enough. Yeah. All right, bring your sauce. Let's, uh, you know, spin yes, your sauce. I, up. Actually, I I got hot sauce <laughs> ready to go. You do. Um, and we'll I, the I judge just had to take going first because you guys are going to feel so bad after I go <laughs> that your presentations yeah. will lack. Will, will lack. Any enthusiasm? You know? I I don't think Nick do actually we has do anything. That to the show, yes, because <laughs> because because all he's doing is just talking. Oh, smack. this is a guy. This is a guy right here who was unquestionably yeah trying to avoid the the uh, the moment. So let's already. I am calling my concept Kung Fu Electric Boogaloo presents. Free mustache rides. What? <laughs> well, I want eight films. 
that star, the greatest mustaches in cinema history, and the men that wear them. If you have a, a movie, We're already so far ahead of last season's concept. Oh my god! <laughs> if you have a movie starring Lee Van Cleef, Burt Reynolds, Richard Roundtree, Charles Fucking Bronson. This is the season to bring it. So you mean we could do Quigley Down Under with Tom Selleck? <laughs> if you think the mustache is a quality mustache. If the mustache fits. And the movie is boogaloo enough, bring that movie. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, wow. I, I'm... I'm <laughs> you can't say it didn't warn you. Man. <laughs> I'm Man. not. I'm not sure. I think the I, sauce I, I, is Nick, what you're. I, I gotta say, Nick, you're a god to me. <laughs> <laughs> you are. <officially laughs> oh. Wow. oh my god! <laughs> All right, give give it a shot on following that up. <laughs> I, can, I, I can, I'm not going after that. I. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be the next guy to go to follow that up. Uh, how, how about I go? How about I go? I'm willing to go. Okay. Uh, I, oh, my God. I withdraw. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't withdraw. <laughs> no. All right. I'll give you my, I'll give you my concept. Oh, oh uh, God. okay. I'm <laughs> Man, I want. I wish there was like another. I wish Brad had sent in a concept. <laughs> I could just read his next. Oh man! All right, I'm calling. I'm calling my concept Dollarama. So you have to go to a dollar store or liquidation store and find a movie that is available on in hard copy at that store, and that's what you bring to the season. Gone Only Dark one Dark. movie. <laughs> well, you would actually. I mean, it's it's a bit tricky because you got to get at least two. I mean, you got to bring two, but you know, if you end up at the same kind of dollar store as the other guys, you may have to actually, actually shake this out to find a third one. I don't know how that will work out, but, oh but yes, God. Dollarama is the name. It has to be a it has to be a clearance store, so it can't just be a cheap movie. It can't be a used store. It has to be a liquidation world, a Dollar Tree. Uh, a uh, what a a clearly discount label store. Wow. Well, you know dollar, what? Dollar that's, as good as a, that's good as a concept. Uh, I, uh, as a uh, for finding Boogaloo, I think that will definitely get us to find some Boogaloo. No question. Um, uh, so that's that's good. That's good. I, I, I will go next. Uh, so I call this one. I remember I'd shown you guys earlier the uh, the app. It's also a website. It's on Xbox, it's on your phones, it's on the PlayStation 4, um, and, and it's, it's more boogaloo per, per second than any human being can possibly handle, and that's the 2B website. And so, I, I, I mean, I'm sitting there looking at the movies on this and thinking, I'm sick and tired of having just one or two movies to challenge, uh, challenge Ninja 3. I want a season where there's a good shot. We have eight films that can, that can put it aside and, and, and knock it out of the top spot. And I think this this is how we do it. I mean, I don't care if you you want Roger Corman's Death Race 2000. You want Bus Party from Hell with with Tara Reid. You want Manimal. You want to some trauma films. You whatever it is that's Boogaloo that you have thought of yourself. Hey, it's probably out there. This insane website Tubi has it, and we talk about it. If you want Reynolds, you want. You want Stallone, you want uh, Norris, you want Reynolds, you want all these legendary Bronson, you want all these legendary characters. This website has it. In fact, in some way, I think we could combine this with, <laughs> with Nick's into a season for what I am uh, calling personally to be decided. I will tell you right now, my my choice for a mustache season is one of them is on uh... – <laughs> To be so. Wow, the lobbying has really started here. <laughs> Man, and, although that is really broad, there's no question about and that. And that's uh, part of the thing that I think was a success is is I like it the idea of it being broad of not of not being 
limit it to just the uh, just one genre or one thing. And, and, and like the mustache thing is broad too. What's good about that is it opens it up so that we can really find a film to knock Ninja 3 out. Yeah, and if we go with the mustaches, I have to say, I believe it'll attract women listeners. <laughs> wow. Wow. That, that would be a first. <laughs> yeah. We wouldn't know what to do with those. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Okay, let's let's move this along. Good Lord. Oh, my God. Uh, all right, so, so I will give mine now. And and it's so? <laughs> you've you've heard of fake news. Well, this is fake sports. In the tradition of something like basketball, there's lots of crazy movies out there that have you know sports that are invented generally for the movie, and some of them are as boogaloo as hell. So that's where I'm going with this one. Ooh, I could watch future sport. That's right. The, not the roller ball movie. Yeah, oh, yeah. no, but we could watch the. But yeah, isn't there you, that that one? We, with we don't have to watch the roller ball movie, but we could <laughs> watch the roller ball movie. <laughs> <laughs> and there's that one with Patricia Arquette. Isn't there that one where she's skateboarding or something? Yes. And yeah. yeah see, there's because there's yeah, so that, much that room. There's Prayer so much for the room. Roller yeah. boys. That's it. I knew you'd know it. <laughs> oh yeah, it stars Corey Haim and is awesome. <laughs> 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 well, I think we've got more actually better categories than we had last time. Now this is how do we decide? Do we vote? Do we do we uh, discuss? What what's the uh, what's the next what's the next step here? Like I, I'm oh man, these are going to be great. I think you can't vote for your own, but but if we do a vote thing, but yeah, what's the uh, what's the I, next? I don't know. Uh, Does anyone not want to vote for their own? so i think we take that vote (laughs) i'm i think i think free mustache rides is too good a title i mean the concept the concept is awesome but the title alone i I, how do uh how do you make that not happen (laughs) all right i that's that's what i'm voting Uh, uh, all right jack what are you voting for then you know what Uh, if i was to uh, i love that idea I do. Um, what was yours again? Uh, yours again, Jim? Uh, I had the uh, Dollarama. Dollarama. And, and the reason, the only, I think we'll find some great movies that way. I just don't want hard copies of anything in my house. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I'm not voting for that. So, I know. It's I, tough, yeah. As much as I, I really do like the mustache one, but uh, I like the idea of the, the sports one, man. I think we could find some cool stuff there. So I'm, I'm, I'm going with that. All right, uh, Nick, where would you vote? Um, just because I don't think there are enough sports movies, uh, nonsensical sports movies, I, I would go with my own, uh, the mustache. <laughs> Fair enough. Except Fair we're enough. not allowed to Fair go enough. with our own. I was I, thinking that we wouldn't be allowed to vote for our own, but... <laughs> your own is the point. In that case, I would go with, um, ooh. <laughs> oh. Oh. Yeah, the to be uh, the to be, the to be exercise. To be decided. We'll find amazing movies on there. Hell, I was watching a movie on there yesterday called Debbie Brashawn Confidential. Uh, gentlemen, you can't imagine the greatness of this movie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I guess so. So that means that we currently have a vote for every uh, everything except. Uh, um, except for the Dollarama. So I would really throw us off if I voted for the Dollarama right now. <laughs> yeah, but I know you want hard copy things even less than your house. <laughs> it's, it, it is very true. That is the number. That is the one that I am least likely to vote for. So I guess it all comes down to me, and I can't vote for my own. So... Two beer or mustaches. Two beer the mustaches. Oh, man, that is really, really hard. Ah, do you, do you remember? Do you remember their first album, Two B and the Mustaches? <laughs> 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 it's uh, classic. Do you remember? <laughs> and their backing band, the Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, their big hit, the uh, Face It. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, it's funny because there's a part of me that wants to 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 choose the Two B one simply so that Nick 
you know, doesn't win after after his title. smack talking. You know? That friggin' title, though. Like, but, the, but the title. Like, it's not how... just the concept. It's oh, I, I, I had the concept title. a week ago. The, the rest title. of the week was coming up with the title. I've got seven or eight mustache <laughs> titles. <laughs> if we ever want to do this again. Well, but you know what? I, I, and, and I think the thing is, we don't want to be picking the same the same guy over and over again. We don't want to have, so that to me could be an, an issue with the season. Yes. You know? Although if you keep bringing weak sauce, it's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. See, there's a lot of guys with mustaches. No, no. And, and the second that you brought up some of those guys, I instantly thought of some movies that I really want to do. And I is, mentioned so... most of those guys, movies that I mentioned are also on Tubi. <laughs> Oh yeah, and and I have no. I I am willing to add Tubi in there. I I have no objections <laughs> to watching all our mustache movies on Tubi. Free then mustache Another nice thing about Tubi. Tubi. Another nice thing about Tubi, I'll just say is 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 I try and sell it to uh to the deciding vote there. The other nice thing about that is that uh, all our listeners could actually easily follow along because it's a free website available to everybody or free app. All right, well, I'll tell you what, the, the decision has been made with the sales job of we'll do mustaches on Tubi. So there you go. <laughs> it's mustaches on Tubi. All right. I mean, Ooh, I can live free that. works in there, too. Does, yeah. Tara, Reed, does Tara Reed have a, a mustache? I really <laughs> wanted to watch Bus Party Ride from Hell. Hey, not, it, does somebody up, in it? upstairs, she doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bet somebody in it has a mustache. <laughs> oh, it, has to be a, it has to be a great mustache. It can't just be any mustache. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, we have chosen next season, season seven. I don't know what the fuck we're going to call it. We'll worry about that for season seven. I know it's got mustaches. I know it's got Tubi. We're going to have a great time as usual. So... We're going to keep going with season six. Man, I don't know how we can do anything after that. But we're going to keep going with season six. Hey, episode eight, when we get to announce the movies, is going to be so great. <laughs> so crazy. But next episode is Break Into Electric Boogaloo. And I hope nobody else has anything to say. So, for Jim, for Jack, and for Nick, I am your host, 8th Dan Stanadu. Thanks for listening to the Kung Fu Electric Boogaloo. My name is Jeff Chelios, and today no, I didn't die. It's storm of heart. Why not just let me die? They were keeping you alive to farm your organs. <laughs> they gave you an artificial heart? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How many bars is this a battery show? What? You got one hour. Keep your body electrically charged to keep it pumping. If you can get hold of your heart, I'm reasonably sure I can put it back in. Just just man. I'm so confused. Where have you been? I thought you were dead. Ah, oh, that wasn't right, was it? Ah. Uh... Hola, Chip. Did I duck? Yeah. That's not so bad. You're gonna tell me exactly who's got more heart. I'm running on empty duck. Find someone to rub against. It causes static electricity. <laughs> He treated me like his hot little whore. Hey, that's a little too much information. Hey. They got what you need in pristine working condition. So this is how it is. <laughs> I give in. An unidentified man is responsible for the explosion of mayhem, murder, and lewd behavior that has swept Los Angeles. I know how this game works. <laughs> Your associates have taken something of value to me. I intend to get it back. Crank 2.
you.